Good morning, LifePoint Church and family. We're just reaching out again to uh, hope that all is well in your household during this time of sheltering in place where we can't get together, but still we can um, communicate in this fashion. This morning, I wanted to share with you some thoughts. Um, you know, during difficult times and tough times, it's easy to be distracted by the problems at hand. But over the years, I've come to realize that it's never really the problem or the issues of what we're facing uh, that's really the issue. It really comes back to a matter of our heart, our relationship with Jesus. I want to take you back to the story in Luke chapter 8 about the disciples and Jesus crossing that sea. The wind and the waves came up. And all the while, the Lord was unperturbed, sleeping. I'm sure those disciples initially were preoccupied with the problem, the wind and the waves. They wanted to make sure their boat wasn't sinking. I'm sure they were rowing harder and maybe even bailing more rapidly to keep their boat from being swamped. But finally, they cried out to the Lord. And it's a very simple prayer. Let me read it to you. Master, Master, we are perishing. Listen to that prayer. Master, Master, we are perishing. You know, this really reveals a lot. Imagine what it takes for seasoned fishermen to finally admit that they're really in over their heads. I'm sure in the beginning, they tried to handle it on their own. But I love that phrase, master, master. You know, when the problems come, we think we're the master initially. We think we can control it. We can work it out. And then the second part of that prayer was, we are perishing. You know, it reveals that they waited to a point of desperation. They waited to the point of almost perishing before they called on the Lord. And aren't we like that? I know I am, and maybe even worse, you know, sometimes I don't even realize, you know, in the calm, still waters, uh, everything's smooth sailing, and it's so easy to drift away from the Lord, and we don't even realize it. And then when the problems come, we scramble to try to handle it on our own. We think we're the master. We think we're the experts. But then finally, when we realize, like the disciples did, I'm in over my head, in desperation, I call and turn to the Lord. It seems like a small thing, but really it's not a small thing. You know, there are unseen forces keeping us, trying to distract our hearts from turning to Him. Did you ever stop to think why the Lord rebuke the wind and the waves. You know, you would think that, well, wind and the waves on the sea, that's part of nature. That's a natural phenomenon. But in this particular case, it wasn't. There were unseen forces battling to keep someone captive. There are principalities and powers trying to keep our hearts captive and distracted from the Lord. You know, the very next story is, after the Lord calmed the waters, is the Lord went to cast out a legion of demons from that poor man who had been even chained up and had broken free. You know, those demons knew that the Lord was coming, and I think they were doing everything in their power to stall and stop and frustrate the Lord and his disciples from coming. They knew the Lord was coming to fight for the heart and for the soul of that poor man. Don't think, though, that that demon-possessed man was the only one under the enemy's control. What about the pig herders? Did you ever consider their response? And then the entire city, you know, they came out eventually to see what had happened. And their reaction was quite surprising. You would have thought they would have been impressed 
that this man who had been possessed by the legion of demons, here he is sitting and clothed in his right mind now, wanting to follow Jesus. But instead they said, we want you to leave our city. We want you to go away. They too were under the control of Satan. And yet they looked normal in that sense. They were just trying to make a living, herding their pigs. But you see Satan and his legion of demons, it doesn't really matter to him. He doesn't care whether you're just working hard to make a living, you can be distracted away from the Lord, or whether you're possessed literally by the demons. Of course you're under the control of the demons, but both have the same result. Our heart, the battleground of our heart, is taken captive by him. And that's why the Lord warned us. You remember he said, as in the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking, marrying and being given in marriage, until the flood came and took them all away. Eating and drinking, marrying and being given marriage, they were all God-ordained things. There's nothing wrong with that. But when they distract us, when they capture our hearts, then that becomes a problem. And that's exactly where the enemy wants us to be. So you see how sometimes our daily living is really a battleground for our heart. And that's why I was really encouraged by some verses in Deuteronomy. I'm going to read them to you. Deuteronomy 1, 28 through 40. And this is where Moses is reminding the children of Israel as they're about ready to enter the promised land of their history. Part of that history was 40 years before they had sent out spies and those spies returned. And this is what he said. He said, our brethren, referring to the spies, they made our hearts melt. Notice the word hearts. They made our hearts melt because the people were bigger and taller than we. The cities were larger and fortified to the heavens. And Moses reminded them what he had told them then. He said, don't be fearful, don't be shocked, don't be afraid. And these are the words that encourage me the most. It says, the Lord your God who goes before you will himself fight on your behalf, just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. The Lord your God, who goes before you, will fight himself on your behalf. Our hearts may melt when we see the difficulties and the problems, but don't forget, we have a God. He's our God. He's going before us, and he himself is fighting on our behalf. And then speaking of Caleb, Moses reminded them, he said, to him, and to his sons I will give the land on which he has set foot. And what's the reason? Because he has followed the Lord wholeheartedly. So you see, it's really not a matter of the challenges that we face. It's not about the problems. It's not about making a living or being faced with big challenges. Those are all distractions. Caleb, he saw the same giants, he saw the same fortified cities, but his heart and his eyes weren't set on facing the giants and conquering their cities. His heart and his eyes were set on the Lord who went before to fight for us. You know, the Lord is fighting for you today. He came from heaven lived the perfect life on this earth. He fought his way on the cross through death and resurrection, conquered death, conquered the enemy to take us and free us, just like he did that demon-possessed man. Today he's fighting for you, but what will we do? We just need to cooperate with the Lord, cry out to him, Master, Master, I'm perishing. Follow him wholeheartedly. That's where I want to close today, but let me say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we confess. We think we're masters, but we're in over our heads. 
we're crying out to you this morning. We're asking, fight for us, go before us. We give this day to you. We want to follow you wholeheartedly. We pray this in your name. Amen. I hope you'll have a great day, and I hope you'll remember, too, that we're praying for you, and if you have any needs and any prayer requests, please reach out to us and let us know.